Welcome to ATL Day Ones with Jarvis and Tanitra. Coming up on today's show, Nephew Ronnie got that party started off right. And a word of advice to the Falcons pass catchers. If you want to see Arthur Smith and Desmond Ritter succeed, do not be Kadarius Tone. Oh, and last but not least for the culture, the curries are got some cooking in the kitchen. It's all coming up next. It's ATL Day Ones. Let's go. This is ATL Day Ones, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. I want to start off by saying thank you for making ATL Day Ones your first listen of the day. Remember, we are free and available wherever you download your podcast and wherever you download your podcast. Make sure that you leave us a five-star review. Really appreciate that from you in advance. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on or enter promo code locked on for a free water bottle with any purchase. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. I promise you. Coming up in 10 minutes. T. When it comes to Arthur Smith, he's going into the third year. This is part of the three-year plan. They're supposed to be going to the playoffs. Does that mean pressure? Does pressure bust pipes? We'll talk about that. But first, T, the Braves did exactly what we asked them to do yesterday, last night, uh, before we got off the show. Is They actually stopped the sweep to get the win against the St. Louis Cardinals, 8-5. to five. And to be honest with you, T, when you think about what Ronald Acuna has been able to do just leading off, and then when he led off with that home run last night, it's almost I'm at almost at the point where if he leads off with a home run, more than likely the Braves are going to get that dub. At least six times this year they definitely did. Of course, one time last night, and it was interesting because it wasn't the first game of the season, but it was the first series of the season against the Nats, second game actually. And it was, once again, not just the first at bat, but the first pitch. So just to have that kind of yes. vision to see where he has a serious launch point is just crazy good. And yeah, like you said, although we can point to it six times that he had a leadoff home run and they won those six games, ultimately speaking, it's the fact that, like you said, every time you see him hit a leadoff run, you feel like, okay, the Braves are definitely in position to win this game. That's a good look. Yeah, it's it's a great look because here there is something that I really think that is a brewing when I just hear um, nephew just talk after games with it, you know, of course, through an interpreter. But when he's talking about just making sure we continue to be consistent, making sure that, hey, this is great, but we just got to stay healthy like that's You know, that's in the back of his mind as well. It's just like, all right. Everything is going well. I know I'm having a really good season right now. I know that I've I've done something that, that has never been done before and you're hitting 30 home runs and 60 stolen bases. Yeah, I get it. I like, but I just want to continue to do what I'm doing and 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 remain healthy. So and I think that and he says that's for all his teammates. So for him to be talking in that manner or talking in that ilk, I just really feel like he's in a really good space. We already know that he's going to win the MVP award, so there's no need to have a conversation about that. But I think that right now, this Brave squad, and to see Max Free to go, you know, get get into those that sixth inning and, and, and do his thing on that standpoint, I think it was just overall just a good win for the Braves um, as a whole. But I do want to talk about one more thing before, before we move on, T. I think... You know, Matt Olson, you know, might be putting together the, the least talked about 50 home run scene in Major League history, right? But but to keep it funky, like, has his silent assassin approach at the plate made you forget about Freddie Freeman yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, forget about Dre. <laughs> and this me. might sound crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, that's the perfect word for it. It's crazy that a guy can be in the conversation with Hank Aaron and Eddie Matthews, two Braves all-time Brave. greats, and all three of them are now tied for second most home runs in a season in franchise history. And right. yet, let's go down the batting order, if you will. Who do we talk about more? Ronald Acuna Jr., Ozzie Albies, Austin Riley, skip on over Matt Olson, mm. Marcelo Zuna, Michael Harris II, and then I'm going to go into the pitching staff, Max Reed, Bryce Elder, <laughs> yeah, Spencer Strider. 
I think we actually talk about Matt Olson after we go through each and every one of those guys. And then on occasion, might talk about Orlando Arcia and even Eddie Rosario sometimes <laughs> and forget to talk about Matt Olson. And he has been solid at first base too, defensively. Yeah. So yeah. really it's an all around effort that makes you really forget about the guy who broke camp and went West. And that to me speaks of Matt Olson's silent assassinism, but also speaks of the greatness of the Braves. The fact that a guy has been leading the majors and home runs as well for just about the entire season. And he's still not the first person we're talking about. And, and I, I think I missed out on Michael Harris. The second, excuse me for missing out on MH two, because as the homegrown player, every time he does something special, we're like, woohoo. So yeah. it's interesting that Matt Olson on this roster is virtually the last guy you speak about, but you could not be at this point in the season of what 90 wins and 47 losses. If he wasn't doing what he was doing. Yeah. I'm talking about four straight games with a home four run. Straight. Crazy. Leading the league, leading the major leagues in home runs with 47. It's just, it's just amazing that, you know, you can be having that type of season. And like, like you said, you're tying names like Hank Aaron, Eddie Matthews, and he's on pace to break Andrew Jones's record. So, yeah. you know, a 51 yeah. home run. So it's, it is just, yeah, this is just, just really cool to see. And, 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 and for the Braves to be getting to, this um this point in in this part of the season, I think I think it's really something that we definitely need to keep an eye on. Also, like I said, just real quick though, your thoughts on Matt Free doing his thing last night? Yeah, very very excited because it was one of those games where you kind of knew that the Braves were still going to kind of have big bats with eight runs and just ten hits. I think that's a nice efficient game for them, especially because it was a just a good enough mix, right? Where you had five home runs, right. and then you had three runs driven in. I love that part, but like you said, Max Fried hanging in there for six solid innings, absolutely huge because what did we see? Not just five, but six runs in two and two-thirds innings just the night before from Spencer Strider, and it really made you just go, what right. in the Sam heck? And let's just be honest. Let's just be honest. Low-key, we probably said, oh, no. Oh, no. Are we about to have a situation again as far as that pitching staff? <laughs> but to say that he got out of there – with and uh you know was a little bit of a low night for him as far as like strikeouts which is four but that's okay because ultimately speaking he also only had a couple of walks so we'll take that and to your point certainly we'll take six innings because anytime you can avoid taxing the bullpen that's a good night absolutely it is absolutely there's there's no way better, better way to put it when you're talking about like all three components of, of the game coming together with the bats, the starting pitch rotation, and that bullpen is just all of those things just just coming together. And like when you can, like you said, you can save a little bit of save some of your arms. It, it's, it's definitely a good thing. Folks, I want to let you know that this episode of ATL Day Ones is brought to you by Bird Dogs. What have you been waiting on? I've been talking about bird dogs. I've been wearing bird dogs. I've been, you know, wearing them out there. I've been a model. You know, I'm the big man model. I'm deeming myself the big man model for, for bird dogs because guess what, guys? These stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. That's what it's done for me. They passed the test, y'all. They passed the big man test. I'm telling you, they got an A++++. My wife kind of talk about me because, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm showing off my legs a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling good about myself. You know, so I need you to feel good about yourself as well and go check out these birds, dogs, because, you know, showing, you know, when you're sitting right there and the shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way, way better. And they fit better than regular shorts because, you know, those stuff be all clunky and they, the khaki is kind of like real, like cardboardy, like, especially like when it's hot outside, you know, it's been super, super hot out here. So I need you to go to these bird dogs to check it out. And they have, will, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on or enter promo code locked on at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your, with your order. Yeah. You rock it. It's, it's hot outside. Remember, I just said that it's hot outside. So you can get this free Bird Dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddog.com slash locked on for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. I promise you. Yeah. 
And I wish I had those bird dogs on right now, along with that <laughs> Yeti water bottle, because man, it is hot like that hooker on the front row. But anyway, yes. also we hope that it's going to be hot. <laughs> The Bills come Sunday at 1 p.m. in the afternoon when the Falcons begin their 2023 campaign with a divisional matchup very early on in the season against Bryce Young and the Panthers. Now, you mentioned earlier that, yes, this is year three of the Terry Fontenot, Arthur Smith regime. This is the year where Arthur Blank has made it clear that he's looking for big dividends. He's looking for big payoffs with all of the things that they were finally able to do, stacking it, right? releasing those players that did not fit the regime, right? Mm -hmm. Bringing in a new defensive coordinator who is really going to, he looks like he's going to be really solid as a replacement for the retiring Dean piece. So you start to shore up your uh, staff, if you will, on the sidelines and you go out in the off season and you get the likes of Caden Ellis and Jesse Bates, the third of, and of course, Calais Campbell. And then you find a player in Bijan Robinson who arguably can be generational. Okay, Jarvis, so now we got all the pieces of the puzzle together, and that then begs the question, does it mean now that particularly Arthur Smith is under pressure, maybe more so than we've seen him under, to get not just a winning season under his belt, but more importantly, to start it off right with a win on Sunday? Yeah, absolutely. I, I wholeheartedly agree that there is some 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 pressure. It's some it's some it's some it's something boiling. You, you know what I mean? And not necessarily from a negative standpoint to where he's gonna he's gonna get fired. No, I'm not saying that. No. But there, like the way this thing is setting up, I really feel like there is the the Falcons should win this game. And Arthur Smith it has to do well. Like he has to use those weapons because like we mm -hmm. talked about consecutive. Three consecutive pass catchers being drafted in the first round. You're going super young on the offensive side of the football and, and, and getting all of this talent, accumulating all this talent, spending some money on this on this side of the football. So I think that it's up to Arthur Smith to be able to go out there and execute. Not only, and he can't do it by himself, the players have to go out there and play. He can come up with an excellent game plan, but if those, goals, those guys don't go out there and execute, you're going to have some issues. And, and I think that Arthur Smith is going to do – Everything possible to set everybody, set everyone up to, to go out there and make plays. But I really feel like the pressure is a little different because I feel like Arthur Blank spilled the beans. Like, hey, they tell you, they gave me a three year plan and this is year three. So, you know, the salary cap, everybody was cool with the whole salary cap being an issue. But there is a thing called NFL draft, which, you know, you can get better that way too because, you know, there's a set amount for those guys that every year. That you are that's in your salary cap that you have to account for. So, but you know, you know, that's a whole other uh, conversation. We're not gonna get into that today. But I really feel like, you know, there is with that, you know, that moniker in place or with that plan being outed like that. Like, yes, absolutely, yeah. You have to come in and they have to get this dub. Not only today, but you know, as the season goes along, they have to build towards winning the NFC South to get into the playoffs because I really feel like that's the only way they're going to get into the playoffs if they win a division. Yeah, I think so as well. And if you look at the schedule, kind of in thirds, if you will, this is a great opportunity for them to come out of the gates because they get two home games, of course, against the Panthers and then against the Packers. In my opinion, that should be 2-0, and no question. But as we saw last night, the Lions are a very – let's say formidable opponent, but also they are very, they take advantage of opportunities, right? right. So they, yeah. And you saw every chance that the chiefs made mistakes, they pretty much took advantage of it. So it's going to be a challenge for the Falcons to go up to Detroit and come back with a dub there. And then to follow that, they're headed to London to play the Jacksonville Jaguars, whom everyone thinks is one of those top teams in the AFC. We don't know the Texans are, kind of like a toss-up, if you will. I'd still think that's a winnable game, by the way. I think that's a W. And then the Commanders, well, we all know the challenges that they faced against the Commanders last season. And the Commanders right. have gotten just a little bit better, so it's going to be interesting to see what that looks like. So I agree. To me, this is an opportunity because, let's face it, your whole division is an opportunity. I mean, I'm not trying to be funny, but you really could go 6-0. and oh. Like your division is that shaky, that unknown QBs that everybody's looking at, especially down in Tampa. Like what in the world is going on? So, yeah, I think the pressure is there because you have everything at your footsteps, like right at, at your feet, right. everything right there for you to be able to make a run and win the division and arguably even 
escape with a win in, in the postseason, but it all starts with what they do on Sunday. And it all starts with the preparation of matchups. You know, DeMarco Hellams had an interesting comment when he was asked about Bryce Young and he just chuckled because he was like, yeah, you know, uh, he's a competitive guy. I went, uh, of course, up against him in practice, but he's good, but I'm also good. And I feel mm -hmm. like I have the opportunity to show what I can do, just like it's an opportunity for him because he said Bryce Young never backs down from a challenge. So I love the fact that he acknowledges what Bryce Young is, that he hits different when he plays, but that, hey, I'm bringing something special to the table as well. So that said, we might not see that matchup per se, like person to person, but what matchups are you looking for where you're saying, okay, this is an opportunity for somebody to show and prove that they are better on the Falcon side of the ball? I think – the entire Falcons offensive line against Derrick Brown. <laughs> you know, you know, that's kind of that's where I'm at with it, T. Like that's how, that's how I feel. Because here's here's the thing. Like we understand, like, yeah, they were a uh, uh, number three rushing team in the league last year, one of the better offensive line from a uh uh, 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 great, how they graded out, you know, um, throughout the um, season last year. Get it? Yeah, from running the football, um, specifically. Yeah, I like Derrick Brown embarrassed y'all last year. Like, I want to see that. I want to see what they're able to do. Can they minimize him? I'm not saying stop him, shut him down. Can they minimize him? Like, can he not have double-digit tackles, you know, as a de as an interior defensive lineman? Can we can we not see that again? So that's that's the biggest matchup, matchup slash challenge. I guess I'm challenging him, I'm calling him out. Like, I guess that's how I'm feeling today. But those are some of the things that you have to really look at how that works out. If we aren't hearing Derrick Brown's name being called that much in that first half, that means the Falcons are, are doing something right. And I think that that's going to be something that I'm definitely have my eye on because we all know what his capabilities are, you know, seeing him coming out of Auburn in the SEC. We, we, we're very familiar with, with Derrick Brown's work. So, yeah. and he made, he, he made sure he reminded us last year when he played against the Falcons on both, on both, on both um, occasions. Now, speaking of a Brown and a matchup that I'm interested in seeing, and this is going to go a little off the beat, beaten path, but it'll okay. be Thomas Brown as in the Panthers OC versus mm. Ryan Nielsen, the okay. Falcons DC. I want to see what that chess match looks like, especially in the second half, because they're both new. Right. So Thomas right. Brown being new this is his first season with the Panthers as an OC coming from the Rams. And of course, Nielsen coming from the Saints. That's the chess match that I'm kind of interested in seeing. For example, going back to what you said, if the um, defensive line shows like we think the defensive front is going to show for the Falcons, how is Thomas Brown going to come back and say, oh, OK, well, do I have to show and prove and get Miles Sanders more involved because yeah. the Falcons are able to bring that pressure and Bryce Young can't get set? Or is it that Bryce Young is going to be quite fine where he is and um, or I'm sorry, Ryan Nielsen is going to have to say, hey. Miles Sanders did his thing. So now we got to look at Bryce Young or vice versa and say, whoa, whoa, you know, um, Bryce Young is doing his thing. So maybe they're going to go more to their ground game and try to push that in the second half. Be interesting to see the chess match there or flip side. If things aren't going so well and Thomas Brown has to figure it out, it's going to be interesting to see what he's able to do to say, hey, you know, my, my quarterback's been under pressure. They have either gotten home more than I thought they were going to get home from the Falcons' perspective, or they've at least been able to affect his passing game. I'm looking for the chess match, looking to see what those coordinators are able to do. I think you make a great point with Ryan Nielsen, because I think he kind of gets forgotten about. Like, we talked about Matt yes. Olson earlier, and how he gets forgotten about with all the extra storylines and B. John Robinson and all that stuff, you know, um, because – there are so many other stories that are more interesting to, to the public eye, right? But I think that when you think about, like, this is going to be, what, his uh, second time uh, calling plays? You yeah. know, literally yeah. calling plays for himself, you know, as a defensive coordinator. He did, he did it in college. I think it was at Central Connecticut State mm -hmm. or something like that. So random, uh, random stat there. Uh, <laughs> and then he was the co-defensive coordinator for the, for the Saints. So, you know, we know, we all know Dennis Allen was, wasn't going to relinquish those duties. Um, right. So he was able to do that. So now it's kind of like, all right, you know, we, we, we know that you, you know, you've had, you know, the co-title before and we know that you have called a play before, but it's been, it's been a little minute. So I think yeah. that the first, that first, after that first series, I'm really interested to see how that first series goes. And then 
like you said, that chess match. How do we, what type of adjustments do we make? And I think that our guy, you know, Jerry Gray, he's going to be a, a very good asset for the Falcons um, um, to for um, for Ryan Nielsen to to lean on because. We all know Jerry Gray has seen all and done all when it comes to uh, being a defense coordinator in the NFL. Yeah, so listen, everydayers, let us know what your thoughts are. Do you think that the pressure is on Arthur Smith right out of the gates to win this game and what the fallout might be if for some reason the Falcons don't win this game? Also, what matchups are you looking forward to? Let us know by dropping a comment in the chat on YouTube. And of course, we appreciate you supporting ATL Day Ones from day one. So keep doing it and downloading this podcast today, wherever you download your podcasts. But T, this is for the culture. It is the intersection between sports, entertainment, the culture, and sometimes whatever the hell we want to talk about. Because that's just how we get down on this show. Today is no different. T, when you think about what Steph Curry has done, um, he's definitely surpassed his father just from an on-the-court standpoint. But, oh, my God, he is yeah. from off the court and what he's been able to establish with his wife and how they've been in the philanthropy that he's been able to do, whether it be with the Howard Golf Team mm -hmm. and just... Just, just doing, just doing that doggone thing. Uh, they've done it again, and they have uh, partnered with the foundation has part, partnered with the Oakland Unified School District to donate fifty million dollars up to the, and this is going to go all the way from now to up to two um two thousand twenty six t to help the, their e learn play initiative. How cool is that? It is absolutely cool. And it's one of those things where when I say stay in your lane, meaning that he's committed to the, the sport aspect of it, whether it's golf and also, you know, he's been very supportive of women's sports and the, the couple has been supportive overall. But to go into places where there's a need and to introduce a holistic approach, like you said, eat, play, all of it, all of those elements are important because, yeah. A lot of these kids, it's not just about sports. That's where that's the starting point for a lot of them, right? right? Because of maybe they may have challenges just in terms of not having as much as maybe the next person has, or you never know what might be going on at home. And so it's a bit of an escape for them. But what a cool escape it is. And I was thinking of this as well. Like a lot of times, he's that guy who's going to be physically involved. Uh, She's that girl who's going to be physically involved. So I could see Aisha and or Steph Curry just popping in and surprising those kids and really giving them that kind of love and support. But yeah, every time you put your money where your mouth is, it's a reminder that you have an appreciation for what has been given to you. And we know the, the saying, the scripture that much to whom much is given, much is required. Right, and I absolutely. feel like Steph Curry and his wife have always taken that mantra seriously and just really put their money where their mouth is. So yeah, when I saw this one, I was like, once again, the Currys went everywhere. <laughs> they just went yes. everywhere. They cook everywhere. And to add to that, like 78% of the, the children in that district that we talked about on free or reduced lunch. Yes. So when you're yes. talking about kids coming to school hungry and you're talking about $50 million to be able to, to, curve that you know you talking about some definitely some some learning is going to start to happen because like yeah. i said it's hard to focus when when you got so many things that these kids are dealing with coming to school or coming to school with like like they had come to school with baggage and for them to kind of erase that i really feel like this is going to be something that we're going to be talking about in the next few years like like man i remember when and look at these kids now and i, I think they're going to definitely reap the benefits of it spiritually uh, you know, and professionally, and it's just going to be really cool to watch um, as they go along. Now, T, before we get out of here, now, you know, when you send me this story, you know, you, you know, send a story with a question and everything, and I'm like, okay, like, you know, and you said bold or bogus. Now, for those you don't know, Lil Rail, you know, the comedian, you know, proposed to his, you know, girlfriend and at the Beyonce concert, they out there kicking it, and he said Miss Tina Knowles, who he looked at as his second mom, helped him out, and Jay-Z and all that stuff, so you know, he thanked Beyonce for, you know, let him get a little time to propose to his uh his old lady. But my whole thing is, how is this not a cool thing? Like, how could this become bogus, T? Like, help me out with that, because I was a little confused when, when you asked that question. Well, as a beehiver, 
Oh, you don't be messing up that Beyonce. Oh, no, God. Oh, Lord. Okay. Why did I know you were going there? You took, you took the attention off of me and made it your own. Not Why she needs more attention? Cool. Because she doesn't get enough, right? Exactly. She doesn't. <laughs> she does not. She deserves all the flowers, all the attention, all the shine, all the everything. So I'm really, really disappointed that Lil World thought it was okay <laughs> for him to, like, take that shine off B. Okay? Oh, it's B day okay, every day. Not just trying to promote four. back loyalty. Like this no, man trying no, to, you know what I'm saying? No. Get his life together. You know what no. I mean? Like go get your life together after the concert or before the concert. Okay. You can like like literally <laughs> the concert officially starts at eight, right? And so you have like this whole build up for like an hour where people are kind of walking oh, around, man. taking pictures, there's music playing. It's like wow. they're getting us ready for the atmosphere. And then at oh. nine o'clock, she just appears. And it's like the coolest oh. thing. Oh Could no, you, could you not have done this at like 8.57? Like you smell that, T? You smell that? So it smell like a little hater on this little hateration going on over there. You know what I mean? Like, oh, no, Lorel trying to, you know, you know trying, to, no, trying to do the right actually, thing. Actually, I love his backstory. No, I actually love Lil Rel because he is a great backstory of somebody who has worked his butt off to get yes. to where he is. And Absolutely. he actually legitimately has a relationship with Miss Tina Knowles. Now, granted, everybody in Hollywood almost calls her Mama Tina. Don't get me wrong. But no she yeah. has said a lot I of things. I got no choice. <laughs> right. Hello. But she said a lot of things in support of him. And I know that yeah. she really, really does love and support him. So for Jay-Z, Beyonce, and Miss Tina to sign off on this, that was pretty darn big. So everybody just know I was joking. I was totally joking. I think that that is a pretty cool thing because if you're willing to express your love in front of all of those people, because you really don't know, you might get a no. I mean, it's happened. So yes, that is, that's possible. Yeah. That exactly. is possible. I yes. think it's a cool move that he made. I think it's bold, but it's the good kind of bold. So no, I'm not hating. I'm actually loving the black <laughs> love. I think it's exciting. And I'm sure that it was a treat for some of the others and Lord. I mean, his fiance, good God, the stories that she's going to be able to tell their kids. Like, no let doubt. me tell you what your daddy did. Like, mm -hmm. that yeah. is huge. No, that's really big. And you know what else is really huge? A couple different things, guys. Of course, the Braves taking on the Pirates this weekend so that hopefully they can win the homestand on or win, leave the homestand on a winning note, right? And Bryce yes. Elder is going to get the start tonight. So definitely hope that they start that series on a winning note. That's a good look. And yeah, we absolutely want to come back sometime next week and have a Falcons party talking yes. about the Falcons getting a win against the Panthers. And of course, anything and all things, including hopefully a win by Coco Golf of her first major. She's going to the U.S. Open final. Excited Coco. for her to talk about that too. Coco Golf, <laughs> do your thing, girl. But you guys, if you want to check out a little bit more of Jarvis Davis, Tanitra Batiste, and our guy Kyle Krabs, check us out in our first NFL kickoff live show this afternoon from 2 to 4 p.m. Right there where? On our YouTube channel, Jarvis. So they can check us out. Yes. yes all, all locked on NFL channels. Like we're going to be to the masses today. So yeah, make sure you guys check us out. Stop playing around. We also thank you guys for making ATL Day Ones your first listen each and every day. Our everydayers, we appreciate you. We thank you and we love you. No doubt about it. But yes, check out the NFL kickoff live. It's going down 2 to 4 Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you all be there. We'll be talking about Kadarius Tony. Sorry behind dropping all these balls. We're getting into it, y'all. And how about, how about this for a segue? If you don't do anything else in life, make sure that you share love, show love, and stop talking about NFL wide receiver out there getting his money trying to provide for his family and spread some love.